Welcome to part three of the Mojo project. This video is about the question, why is Jupiter so much bigger than Earth? Actually, the solar system is divided into parts. The inner part is inhabited by the terrestrial planets, which are small and rocky, and the outer part is inhabited by the giant planets, which have masses from tens to hundreds of Earth masses and contain a lot of gases, hydrogen and helium. Inside the gaseous planets, there are rocky cores of about 10 to 20 Earth masses. These are planets by themselves. These cores must have formed within the lifetime of the protoplanetary disk, so in a few million years, because they grabbed hydrogen and helium from the disk to build the giant planet around them. In the inner part, so the Earth is one Earth mass, but we know that the Earth took several tens of millions of years to form, so a much longer time scale than the lifetime of the protoplanetary disk. Actually, several lines of evidences show that within the lifetime of the protoplanetary disk, the inner disk was able to build only protoplanetary embryos of about a tenth of an Earth mass, or about the mass of Mars. So to summarize, the protoplanetary disk around the Sun was able to form planetary embryos in the inner part with a mass of about 0.1 Earth masses, whereas in the outer part it could form planetary cores, solid cores, with masses of about 10 Earth masses. And this mass ratio of 100 to 1 between the planets formed in the outer disk and in the inner disk is what we call the great dichotomy of the solar system. So one of the major contributions of Mojo has been to show that pebble accretions can explain the great dichotomy. So remember from part one that planetesimals keep growing by accreting drifting pebbles, and in this way they can become protoplanets, planetary embryos or protoplanetary cores. Now in the protoplanetary disk, the temperature changes as a function of the distance from the sun. In the inner part, the disk is hot, so the only solid elements are in rocky form, whereas in the outer part, the disk is cold, so solid material can be in icy form, and the boundary between the hot, rocky disk and the cold, icy disk is called the snow line. In the outer part of the disk, pebbles are icy, and they should be about centimeters in size. Their composition should be like that indicated in this scheme. So this pebble should be made of rocky seeds of about a millimeter in size entrained into an icy matrix. These pebbles drift in the disk. And when they pass across the snow line, because the temperature becomes too high, the ice sublimates. And therefore, the rocky seeds are released. And in the inner disk, therefore, the only solid pebbles that can be used for planet formation are millimeter size rocky pebbles. Now pebble accretion is very sensitive on the size of the pebbles to accrete. So consider for example two protoplanets that grow in the disk, one just inside of the snow line, the other just outside of the snow line. The, the red one, the one just outside of the snow line, because it can accrete centimeter size pebbles, it can grow to 20 Earth masses in the time when the inner one because it can only accrete millimeter-sized pebbles, can grow only to about the mass of Mars. And this explains so the, this dichotomy in the solar system, big planetary cores in the outer part and small planetary embryos in the inner part. And I repeat, this is due essentially to the fact that pebbles, icy pebbles in the outer part of the disk, are at least an order of magnitude bigger than rocky pebbles in the inner part of the disk. Once Jupiter reaches a mass of about 20 Earth masses, it starts to carve a gap in the disk, which divides the protoplanetary disk in two parts, the outer part and the inner part. But also it accelerates the rotation of the gas in a narrow ring just outside the gap. And because gas there rotates around the sun faster than solid particles, it pushes the solid particles outwards by centrifugal force, whereas everywhere else in the disk, solid particles tend to move towards the sun because of gas drag. Therefore, pebbles from the outer part of the disk migrate towards the sun have to stop at the outer edge of this ring of fast rotating gas. They cannot continue their journey towards the sun into the inner part of the protoplanetary disk. Therefore, Jupiter forms an effective barrier to dust drift, of which we see here an artist view. Outside of the orbit of Jupiter, the disk has to remain with a high content of dust and pebbles, whereas the inner part of the disk will have only a small content of dust and pebbles, because dust and pebbles cannot drift 
through Jupiter's orbit. And it's interesting that we actually do observe this kind of disks. They are called transition disks, and we see an image down here at the bottom. And the formation of this dust barrier has many implications that we will detail in part five and nine of the Mojo videos. Mojo! Oh.